Good afternoon, Chris. Eddie, how are you doing? Good. Good to see you. Excellent. You Good to see you. Do you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfect. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. You know right. what? Let's, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Welcome, everybody who has logged on today on the Zoom and also on social media. We're live on the <clears> social <throat> media as well. This is our Leveraging Market Stats to Boost Your Business series. We do this every single month. Uh, we are going to go over the latest official statistics of South Florida real estate. Um, these are coming from the Miami MLS, which the Miami Realtors own. So this is our data. We are releasing it to the media. We're going to give you all the fresh new statistics, but more important, we're going to give you the trends. Uh, we're going to tell you like where the market is moving towards. And as we get into that, let me introduce um, our guests. And uh, the reason why this prog program has been so successful the last two years is because of our different Miami leaders that come on. And really, they are the boots on the ground. You know, they explain uh, where the stats are, you know, the trends that we're seeing in the market. And today we have one of our best leaders. He is our 2023 residential president. He is Mr. Miami Lakes, Eddie Blanco. How are you doing, Eddie? Good. Great to be here. Quite the introduction there, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, th thank you, Eddie, for being here. Um, Eddie, so right off the bat, you know, we have, uh, you know, realtors, our members on, on the Zoom and also maybe uh, the public watching on, on uh, social media. Can you tell us about why is this so important? Why is it important for realtors to, to know the stats and the trends? And um, why is it, you know, that maybe they just want to sell a home, but why is it so important to know the statistics? Well, because we're in a day and age of, of data and technology. And so our consumers have access to a lot of this information. So if you aren't taking the time to know this information and become an expert in the, in the data, you're, you're behind. Uh, your competition, you're behind even some of your consumers. So it's very important that we know what's happening, how to understand the data, uh, how to communicate uh, our, our data and our story of the data, because it's not just about the data, it's about understanding the, the, the data and being able to tell the story of Miami and Miami real estate and what's happening, because that's what our consumer, consumers want from us. Yeah, no, definitely. Great, great job. Definitely. And wait until everybody, if, if you guys could stay with us for the next hour, we have a a slide deck that uh, nobody else has this slide deck and nobody else has this expertise. And so let's get into it. This is our agenda for today. We're going over the March two, 2023 statistics um, with Eddie's perspectives. And let's, here's a look at our future lever leveraging stats webinars. We got a great lineup set up. Christina Pappas, uh, Florida Realtors President from 2022, will be uh, our, our guest on May 18th and Catherine Arteta in, in June. Okay, so this is being recorded. It's going to be available for all Miami Real uh, members on MiamiRealtorsLive.com. Uh, pre this presentation, I know in the past people have asked for the slide deck. We could uh, email that to you. So you could, uh, if if you don't get in the email, you could email me, and I make sure we'll get it to you. So first thing right off the bat, I wanted to say is that all of our statistics that we're putting on the website today, uh, it will be March statistics and first quarter statistics is going to be on SFMarketIntel.com. So if you don't write anything down. Could you write this one down, this bookmark, sfmarketintel.com? You guys right. are doing, I got to say something real quick, right, Chris. You guys are doing a fantastic job with the data that you're putting out. Um, and you, as agents, if, if we're not taking advantage of the data that's being put there and, and reposting it on social media, you're missing out on a great opportunity because uh, the Miami Realtor professionals like Chris uh, is, is putting this data together in a way that's really easy to just reshare. And uh, so I encourage you to do that. You'll look like the market expert. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Eddie. Uh, of course. Okay. All right. Yeah. So Eddie, the first question, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk out there about how the U.S. could be heading into a recession. Um, and so how would that impact real estate and more specifically um, South Florida real estate? So, you know, um, I, I'm certainly not an expert in um, macroeconomics, right? But I, what I do know is that from historical numbers that we know is that when we're in recession, real estate becomes a great way for investors to, to, to hedge against um, uh, a, a recessionary market. They, they, so real estate in, re, becomes a good vehicle for investment. We've seen historically where there is a recession, real estate 
is one of the asset classes that holds up very well. Yeah, no, great point. Great point. Um, and also, I wanted to include this slide here. It's, it's, uh, I found this was interesting. The equity buffer, if you look at um, the, the equity that homeowners have built up in the last several years and compared to uh, the LTV, there's a big buffer there. So um, important point to look at. Yep. Okay, all right, all right Eddie, uh, the next slide here is, is talking about mortgage rates. Uh, yes. Looked at it the other day, it's at 6.67. Quite a roller coaster ride for mortgage rates. Uh, if you remember, around this time last year, it was 2 3%. So uh, what, what, what type of impact are you seeing from, from buyers uh, on mortgage rates? I, I think the initial impact was, uh, scared, scared the socks out of most buyers for the first month and a half. But then when we realized that these new, new interest rates were the new normal, it, it got buyer, buyers back in the game and buyers are still uh, moving into the market. So I, I think that this is going to be the new normal. Uh, I, my my if you look back in, in the 2000s, in the early 2000s, there was a pretty steady, you see that you can see those numbers bounce around there from, from like, that's kind of when I got in the business, late 90s, all the way into, I would say probably into 2008, 2010, you had pretty pretty stable interest rates. And I expect that we're gonna kind of get into that market here soon. And that's that's what that's what uh, most economists believe and are, are stating. Definitely, yeah. And it, it's what our economist says. Uh, our chief economist, Gay Coratone, talks about that exactly. Around five point five percent by the end of the year. Yep, uh, and 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 yeah, that's her. Yeah, she expects it'll drop a little bit and then stay and, and stay stay stable after that. Exactly. Okay. Um, and this is another uh, talking point that I've seen out there in the media about a mortgage rate lockdown. About how you know uh, you know uh, the, most of home buyers today purchase their home maybe at three percent maybe at 2%. And so now they're at 6%. So the theory is, is that they won't, uh, you know, they'll never move. And here's just some examples of, of why that's not the case. The one I, I enjoy is that 42% of US homes are owned free and clear. They don't have a mortgage. So how could they be locked in? Uh, Eddie, any, any thoughts on that? Uh, what, if you've been hearing that? Yeah, I, I have been hearing that. And the fact of the matter is that, you know, some people may not, right? But there's going to be some that are, most that are, because the reason we make moves is not, we don't really, people don't buy and sell real estate because of the financials of it. People need housing. And so their job re relocates them. They need a house where they're moving to. They have more kids. Uh, they get divorced. They, you know, uh, ha ha you know have less kids because they move out of the house. All these life-changing events happen, regardless of where rates are. People are going to be forced to make decisions that may not be financially the most, I don't know, uh, strategic or ideal, but it doesn't matter because really what makes people make, make those decisions to move are life-changing events. And we all know that we don't, we don't we generally don't just say, Oh, you know, I'm just going to go get a bigger house because I want to, or a smaller house because I feel like it. it's usually a life-changing event. And so those are going to continue to happen. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Real estate is not like the stock market. Right. Different. Yeah. And so here's, uh, you know, in reference to the uh, the mortgage rates being at 6%, here are some options that, uh, you know, realtors could use to get creative. You know, a two, two for one buy, mortgage buy down program, assumable loans, some options there that, you know, maybe it's time to get creative now at, at, in this profession. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's, I think that, I think realtors do themselves more damage. Uh, than the reality of the market. And what I mean by that is that, um, you know, we get into our head about, oh, people aren't doing this or people are doing that. And we believe that. And then we act in accordance with that. The truth of the matter is people are going to keep buying and selling real estate, guys. They've been doing that since the beginning of time and they will continue to do it. So uh, we just got to it's, 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 look at it very simply. There, it's, it's real estate is uh, two things, people, right? Relationships with people. And property. So if you if you know what's happening in the market and you're paying attention here and you're seeing what's happening with the data, that's important to convey that. And then the quality of the relationship you have with with your consumers, um, that's it. If you stay focused on those two things, uh, you'll be selling real estate no matter what happens with the market. That's a great great philosophy. All right, definitely. Okay, um, okay. So let's talk about some of the 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 positives that we have going in the Miami market. It's a unique market. It's different from any other market. And if, if you've been following the statistics, Miami has been outperforming uh, the, the, the nation and outperforming many major metrics. And we're going to show you that. But uh, here are just some of the, the talking points that make Miami unique. 
our migration, our jobs, our wealth influx, our cash buyers, our global buyers. And let me move it on to the next slide, Eddie. I wanted to ask you about this one. This is, we just posted this graphic on our, our Instagram. It comes from the uh, CoreLogic Case Shiller Index, their last index. And look which city is number one, year over year home price growth. Um, Eddie, could you speak of that? Just how unique is this market? It is it, incredibly unique. Uh, for all the reasons you mentioned before, and you know what's crazy is the international buying market hasn't even really, I mean, it's, it's just getting started and coming back in a strong way after COVID. So real estate values were going up even without a big influx of international buyers during that COVID time because of travel. And now that the travel is coming back, the international market is, is, is doing really well. And I mean, this chart shows it all. I mean, I already retweeted that one, by the way. That's a great, not retweeted, but re reshared that one because it, it really tells tells the story of our growth that we're still having. And people are talking about a downturning market. I'm like, no, not Miami. I was I spent some time downtown today um, with my wife. We went down there and we're, uh, we had breakfast down there and, and walked around Perez Art Museum and, and some things. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's such a beautiful city. And it keeps growing in a way that, you know, when I grew up here, Miami was, I mean, I was born in 76. In the 80s, Miami didn't have a very good reputation. And then after that, it kind of has been growing and growing. And now we're a true international city. I heard in the news today that Miami-Dade County Public Schools is the third largest school district in our country, but the second to LA, I mean, excuse me, New York and LA. So Miami is in third place for the largest school district. So it just kind of tells you that we are now a real serious deal metro city like like comparable to New York and LA. And we're bringing those people from those cities here in record numbers. So that's exciting. That's true. That's true. Oh, that's incredible stuff right there. Great story there about downtown. Um, yeah. And so here's another graphic that kind of speaks to Eddie's point here about, you know, Super Prime, which is $10 million sale purchase or more. Ultra Prime was at $25 million or more. And so you could see the Uber luxury, and you can see where Miami ranks uh, in Palm Beach and Broward in terms of those sales. Uh, this graphic was from Knight Frank. Yep. And and the, what's crazy is if you look at the price per square foot of those other markets, Miami's value is way above LA, New York, or London for sure. Uh, price per square foot, we 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 beat them as well. So uh, we'll soon be uh, number one. That's that's what I I believe. <laughs> yeah, we're on, we're on the way there, definitely. And, yes, and Miami, it's, just a, it's a young, young city, really, in comparison. It's a baby to city, absolutely. That's 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 another big factor. It's we're you know, we're we're a young city relative to the other cities. Yeah, and this is what Eddie was referencing earlier. Take a look at our driver's license exchanges. This was a we pulled the statistics from the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Vehicles, and you could see California to Miami is up eighty percent. This is in comparison to pre-pandemic. Uh, and this, these are from this first quarter, uh, New York and New Jersey. So these are our top three feeder markets, California, New York, New Jersey. Yep. Here's another a graphic here that supports that point about migration. This is coming from the U.S. Postal Service change of address data. Miami ranked number one in terms of inbound moves. So that's another point there. And, you know, I'll, I'll like to say, I don't know if you're, we're, I want to say one more thing about that. It's not just that the people are relocating here. It's that the income of the people that are relocating here is higher than the income of the people that live here today. And so when I first saw these, seeing these numbers go up, I said, who can afford it? Not your regular Miami. And okay, well, that's not who's buying. Uh, I mean, some of them are, but a lot of the people that are driving these prices up are people who are coming in with, with bigger, bigger salary. And yeah. these companies that are coming here relocating are bringing bigger paying jobs, better paying jobs. Yeah, definitely. And, and they're using their profits, you know, from their, you know, they sell their home in New York and they use that. Yep. Um, and here's a look at another statistic in terms of net new residents per day in Florida, more than a thousand per day. Um, I also wanted to show this graphic that we put out uh, about a month ago in terms of where our ages distribution is, and you can see um, it has increased if you compare it to 2011, um, especially, you know, the, uh, 
25 to 34, and the 45 to 54 is up. So th what's important about this graphic, go back real quick to it, is that the this you this this great this age grade, um, that that's the that's the population, our distribution and population. Um, a lot of this this, this uh, 25 to 34, they some of them haven't even bought yet, and so they're, as they're coming into the market, they they and they're buying. Um, that's just more, more icing on the cake for us, more opportunity. Definitely. Okay. Okay. So let's start getting into some of these statistics. Is well, first one we're going to go through is median sale price. But before we get into our March numbers, let's first take a look a little bit. Let's go in the past and then we're going to go into the future. So the, <laughs> this is a look in terms of if you purchase a Miami Dade single family median price home in 1994, your home would have appreciated almost half a million dollars in, in 28 years. And that's not even including inflation. Um, Eddie, what, what do you think about this? This kind of puts into words that, that tells the story of our price appreciation. Yeah, it does. And so real estate isn't a game of wait, wait and, and wait to buy. It's buy and wait, right? So that's the game of real estate. So don't wait to buy, buy and then wait. Uh, so the longer you hold real estate, the, the, the longer the guarantee is that you're going to make money. That's, that's the truth. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like we said earlier, price appreciation is one of the key attributes that makes Miami different, right? And here's another uh, graphic. This is from Goldman Sachs, Goldman and uh, Global Investment Research. They studied all the markets and this is their forecast year over year price change. And of course, Miami is one of two markets. The other one's Baltimore, but you could barely, barely see that percentage there. But uh, this shows you our price appreciation is unlike anything in the country. Yep. And Goldman Sachs, actually, that's one of our client, my clients, and um, they're, they're very bullish about Miami. There you go. Okay, so here are Miami-Dade median sale prices. Again, we're releasing this to the media today. Um, these are official statistics. Miami-Dade prices are up 5.5% uh, for single family. Condo stayed even. But overall, this would make uh, more than 11 years of consecutive price appreciation in Miami. Let me show you Broward. Broward is up. And Palm Beach is also up. And Eddie, I just wanted to go through these. Uh, let me know if you, you see anything here that you'd like to say. But these are historical. If you want to look at the uh, median sale prices through, uh, through the years, this is Miami-Dade. This yep. is Broward. And Palm Beach. Yep, I just, I'm, I just, it's not very surprising, really. I just, uh, this is what I, what I, I, I'm seeing in the market on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I still see, right. we do a lot, we list a lot of homes, and um, I still see multiple offers on the properties that are priced right, um, multiple, like over ten, uh, on most of the listings that are priced correctly. Yes. Okay, and then so one of the reasons why you know our prices are going up, you know, supply and demand in our list, uh, even though uh, inventory has been trending up, trending up in the last six months or so, it is still historically low when you compare it to where where it's been. And this graphic kind of tells the story of how you know we still need uh, some more inventory, especially in the in the um, sub one sub one million. Yeah, and and especially in the single family home, exactly. Okay. And uh, Eddie, this is the graphic I think you referenced before in terms of uh, square meters of prime property, uh, $1 million buys, and you can see the value uh, of, of how Miami compares to Tokyo, Beijing, and those other cities. Yeah. We are a beautiful international city in a beautiful country on the water, and we're still uh, cheaper than many of the other cities around the world. That's true. Key point, on the water, yes. Um, and then here's here's a look at how how uh, South Florida ranks in terms of uh, U.S. cities. Another another barometer here. This is from the NAR Global Study. All right, Eddie, I wanted to, to ask you about this one here. This is a question that comes up on our webinar um, from time to time. It's tale of two markets. You know, so prices are increasing, increasing, increasing. And the question is, is this going to be another 2008? If what, what would be Good your question. answer? To that? Well, I, I mean, I, I, um, I, I'm very connected to the, that 2008 market because we sold a lot of foreclosed properties in 08 
oh nine ten, and I'm still very connected to a lot of the the the, con the banks and hedge funds that were part of that foreclosure mess. And the answer is, this is not going to be another two thousand eight. And the reason, the, the very number, couple of top reasons why is, well, they know they learned their lessons. Dodd Frank is a big part of that. The Dodd Frank bill, oh, it's right there. The loan requirements, and not only the loan requirements, but the way those loans are securitized and sold into the secondary market, it's completely different. Uh, technology is a big factor in the servicing of those loans. We saw when when the, that that mortgage forbearance option came available within four days, bank servicers already had a button to apply for mortgage forbearance. I remember the days of faxing short sale documents to the bank, and then they you know they you could only fax them in. I mean just just put that in perspective. In two thousand eight. The only way to rescind documents to a bank was to fax them in. You know that is we're so far away from that. So even if we had a a a, a downturn in the market, even if we uh, in, in in terms of values and we had a foreclosure crisis, it would it wouldn't happen because the the because of the way the technology is in place to allow for expedited processes. And our my clients, the ones I'm I, I deal with on a regular basis, are saying, hey, we're not going to see foreclosure numbers anywhere near. Or anything like what we saw in 2008, not even a small fraction of it. Yeah, that's an incredible expertise. I, lo I love that story about the facts. Yeah, that's that's that, yeah, that really mm -hmm. tells us. Um, okay, and then here here backs up you know uh, Eddie's point here in terms of uh, take a look at foreclosures where they are. If, if we were having a 2008, those foreclosures should be a lot higher than they are. Uh, the credit scores are still looking good. Um, yep, and, and I'll tell you real quick. In COVID, when COVID hit, there was um, there was a, a, a eight million people that applied for mortgage forbearance. Eight million people, they all got mortgage forbearance. And of those eight million, there's six hundred thousand left that haven't gotten a workout. That's it. So you know, all those people that were in trouble are out of trouble. And of the six hundred that are or so that are left, they're being worked out. And it's not likely to see any real significant issues with that. It's, if we have an economic downturn, it's not going to be because real estate caused it. That's for sure. Excellent. I love that stat. Great. Great stat. Um, okay. And we talked about, you know, the, the wealth migration that's moved in. This is a study that backs it up in terms of, um, this is 2021, so we got to work on getting some, some newer up-to-date up info, but, you know, definitely it backs up the point that our, our, our um, median salary is, has increased. All right, Eddie. So, in terms of you know the realtors that are on this call and maybe watching on Zoom on social media, you know I put this list together in terms of why buy a home now. But you know, what what type of advice you know would you give uh, to realtors in, in light of the the mortgage rates that are at six and seven percent? Um, you know, like you said earlier, real estate will always go on. Yeah, it's really not. It's it's really a no brainer because here's the deal: a home isn't. Uh, you know, I, I am a believer. Uh, the Rich Dad Poor Dad book says that a home is not an your home is not an investment, and I and I actually prescribe to that idea. Your home is an expense; it's a monthly cost. So your your buyers are up against either they're going to pay rent or pay a mortgage, and the conversation needs to be why would you pay a mortgage versus paying rent? It's a very simple explanation why. There's tax savings, there's appreciation, but most importantly, there's stability. You know, when you buy a home, you get stability. You get to keep your family. Your kids in the same school. You don't. You don't have to be rushed out of your house by the landlord who wants to rush your rent up. You know, if, if we've seen anything, we've seen how people have been displaced because of increasing rent, and in this market, whereas people who had secured their mortgages for thirty years, their rents are pretty stable. I mean, there is some increases for taxes and insurance, but you don't have this enormous increase overnight. So that's to me the reason to buy is stability for your family. And security for your family that is the reason i own my home oh no it's phenomenal phenomenal yeah it's the gateway to uh, generational wealth no doubt you're in your home okay so let's get into these uh, new numbers again we're releasing these to the to the media closed sales how are closed sales doing they are down if you've been following us along the last six months or so closed sales have been down year over year why well, what is it in comparison to? It's comparison to 2022, March 2022. And if you remember March 2022, it was an incredible month. Actually, I looked it up. March 2022 was the third most home sales in Miami for a month. 
in Miami-Dade history. So when you're comparing that, um, it, it's a hard comparison. But Eddie, when you compare it to 2019, our, our sales uh, this month are 8% higher than pre-pandemic. Correct. And that's really what we need to be focused on. The pandemic was a, a, a financial blip. Um, we, we need to remember that, that, you know, if you were in real estate um, before the pandemic, good for you. If you weren't, then you're going to have a rude awakening because the market is different today, of course, and it's an adjustment. But if you were here pre-pandemic, it, it's kind of back to pre-pandemic. That's the market we're in today. Um, it's, and th like I say, I, I just think that COVID was a, was a temporary financial blip and we should not really be concerned how sales look compared to them, to, to COVID numbers. Yeah. And this March is a, a really good month. It's actually the seventh best March in Miami history. So uh, I hope that gets put into context. And we have that in our news release that we're sending out today. Um, and so Broward, Broward, you know, same story. Yep. Down double digits in comparison to the historic 2022 in Palm Beach. Same story. Let's move over to how we could help our, our members uh, on the call here. Are you guys using leveraging market watch on Matrix? Eddie, are, are, do you use this? And how would you suggest uh, you know, to help our members? Yeah, I mean, what? yes, this is a very good, whenever, whenever I log into Matrix, I, I look at this and just um, what I wanna see is you know, what's happening in terms of the number of new listings versus the uh, properties that are going back on the market, the number of closed sales. And sometimes I'll dive deeper into those numbers. Uh, I'll look at how, how that might be different in, in looking back today versus a week versus a month. And I, I, I toggle those numbers a little bit just to really understand. And you can, the good thing is you can customize this um, and, and you can get it down to your, you know, down to your zip code and really understand what's happening. And it gives you a quick glimpse, you know, so you don't have to be digging in and doing market research every day. This is like a quick preview of what's happening. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Um, here are some other ways uh, that you guys can leverage micro data. You know, it's important to know the macro but realtors make their business on, on the micro. Um, are you guys using SunStats? It is a free Miami service on, on, the, on the gateway. Um, are you using uh, our zip code reports? We just posted them on sfmarketintel.com. Every single zip code in South Florida. Uh, are you using RPR? I hope you are. Let me tell <laughs> you, the, the, the micro data is where it's at. Just like national data doesn't tell the story of what's happening in Florida, um, or, or Dade County data doesn't tell the story what's happening, you know, it doesn't have to tell the story of what's happening in their, your client's specific neighborhood. And you, by going into sun, the, the sun stats, you can get into the zip code and really dive in and really understand what's happening. But when you put a, a, a little social media blip, hey, you know, in, in, in Pinecrest sales are up or, you know, this, you know, average sale price is up, whatever you do it in a micro um, market, uh, you're going to get a lot more attention to that than if you just put this wide uh, data. And here's an example that SunStat data, you can pull that up and put it in social media. Highly recommend you do that. Very easy to use SunStat, a couple of clicks and you got it. And Miami Realtors does the training on that as well. Yeah, no, yeah, here it is. I mean, if you guys aren't taking advantage, it's a free Miami service and, and you could have this, you know, graphics in minutes. Okay, so let's take a look at new pending sales, best indicator of future closed sales. Um, Eddie, we've been doing this graphic the last uh, couple months, and this is the third consecutive months that showing appointments have risen month over month. Uh, these are great uh, leading indicators, right? I think so, yeah. You know, it, it starts with a showing and then it ends up with a pending sale and then it ends up with a closed sale. That's just the way it is. And so when you see this, when you see there's more showings than there are uh, pendings, that's good. And it's going to continue that way. Yeah. And then so we get when we get into the stats, of course, you know, the year over year are down, but take a look at that green line. We are trending up um, for in Miami Dade. These are the, that green line is pending in Broward. Same story. You can see that trend line going up. And in Broward as well. OK, let's let's shift into dollar volume, some of all sale prices in a given time period. Um, take a look at these numbers. Yes, they are down year over year, but still, Eddie, what power of an industry? You have $2.1 billion just in one month in Miami-Dade and $1.5 uh, in $2 billion in Palm Beach. 
uh, this speaks to the power of of the industry that we're in, right? Yeah, I, I'm. Just, I'll be. I, I'm. I'm not greedy. I just want ten percent of the market share. That's all. <laughs> no, I mean, if, if we only did, if you if you only did one percent of market share, you know, you'd be killing it as an agent. That's the kind of market that we that we have uh, in, in South Florida. Just so much opportunity, um, and that's why I was telling you earlier. I think that the, we get in our own ways with our mindset about how what's happening. It's happening, guys. I mean, the deals are getting done. The, the question is, are you doing them? And if you're not, then then why not? Uh, and it's probably because you're not talking to enough people about what you do. Um, or putting enough sun stats up. <laughs> yeah, no, excellent, excellent. Okay, all right. Months of supply. This is another important, uh, very important metric, especially nowadays, where our, you know, if you have six to nine months, it's a balanced market. That's where we. That's the type of market that we want. It benefits buyers and it benefits sellers. Less than six months is a seller's market. More is uh, more than nine months is a, a buyer's market. And, you know, obviously on the macro level, we're on the sellers, but micro is a different story. And if you break it down, uh, different price ranges. Um, here's a, a most of supply calculation example. I'm gonna, uh, you'll have that there in the presentation, but let me move over in the in the sake of time. Uh, Eddie, here, here's a look at our most of supply. Trending up continues. This is a trend line that we continue to see. Uh, 4.2 months, that's for all properties. Um, but the, the key, and I guess we'll, we'll get into it later is, is new listings, right? We need the, the fresh supply. That's it. You got it. And that's still, our numbers are still, they're, they're trending up, but they're still way below where they were in 2019, uh, 2000. Well, you have the number here to 2021. So yeah, we're still way below the numbers where we need to be in terms of supply. Yeah. And then, so actually, Miami day has more supply. And then Broward is at three months overall, all properties. And Palm Beach is at 3.5, but trending. I remember when these numbers were one for Palm <laughs> Beach, one month of supply. Yep. Uh, and so we're increasing there. Okay, so here's a look at luxury properties, one million and above, it's at 10 months. Um, but I know we've, we've spoken to one of our important brokers in Miami, uh, Dade, Ron Sheffield, and he told us that, you know, 10 months is, 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 is healthy there for the luxury market. Yes, that's true. It's a different market. It's a different market, yes. All right, and so here's a look at the months of supply by price point. Um, and as you can see, you know, it, it varies. You know, the luxury is over uh, nine months, especially when you look at condos. So that, that the luxury condos, is a, a buyer's market, but then, you know, it, it differs in terms of each price range. And it differs it, in condos, it differs by building. I mean, it really gets down to like the nitty gritty. So these, these, these big numbers, even if we get them down, it really boils down to that one property. And as, as an expert, you need to understand how to break that down and figure out what's happening in that market, on that block, in that street, in that neighborhood, you know, that, that's important. And it changes as you change and what price point, what type of home, and what age bracket of home, you know, so many factors. Uh, and uh, and it, you dig into the data and start messing around, you start to see the changes. Definitely, okay. All right, so let's take a look at some hot markets, some neighborhoods, and this is by months of supply, lowest months of supply, you know, with, with at least 80 new pending sales. Homestead checks in at number one, the hottest uh, market uh, for single family. Country club uh, in condos, Eddie, any, any of these markets that, that uh, you wanted to talk about or? Just that I just I just sold the Miami Gardens property, 33 offers, no joke, $35,000 over list price. So, oh, wow. yeah, it's crazy. Wow. It just happened, yeah. 33 offers. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. How, how do you how do you deal, um, at some point you have to stop the-, uh, the, the No, the... until the seller decides on an offer, you know, you got to keep, accepting i mean you can't tell people don't submit offers so yeah we use mls offers and all the offers come in until the seller decides that is incredible yeah. wow yeah. that happened over one weekend it was crazy wow uh incredible okay um in broward here's a look at the hottest markets in broward margate uh for single family and davy uh just 1.3 months of supply in davy again um we have all these city and zip code reports uh, our design team, our incredible design team has uploaded them to sfmarketintel.com. At the, t you know, if you go straight to sfmarketintel.com, 
but also on our website, we have a stats button. You, you should be able to find it there. Every single report. And so here's a look at Palm Beach, the hottest markets in Palm Beach and Martin County. Active inventory. So let's see how many total uh, active listings we have. And again, the trend line we've been seeing, it's up year over year, which is you know good news. Our market needs more uh, inventory. Let's take a look at median percent of original price received. You know, what percentage? And, you know, I, ever since I've been doing this, it's always been around 100%. So 96%. That's, and, and actually, the, the story that you just gave, 33 offers, really, if it could go over 100%, uh, you know, it, it would have uh, during the pandemic, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but this that's crazy. You know, you had that that's like blip I'm talking about. You see where the, the, the line at the top, top side, it goes off the chart. It goes off the 100%. That was a, a blip where people were just paying over list price no matter what. That was a, that was a, that was the market norm. It's crazy. Every there drop. You there you go. Yeah, it went off the chart. <laughs> uh, okay, median time to contract. How many days does it take to come to terms? And um, in Miami days, it takes thirty six days to to come to contract. Broward thirty days. Palm Beach thirty three days. Um, Eddie, I, I follow this economist, uh, great on housing wire, Logan, and he mm -hmm. talks about, I remember one of the quotes he said was that, you know, if, if your median time to contract is a teenager, it's, it's not, not healthy, but you know, uh, now, you know, we've, we've graduated, we're past the college and 36 days, that's a getting to be a healthy number. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where it needs to be. That's a more stable market. Um, you know, even up to 60, 65 days, the contract is, is normal. I remember when 90 days was normal. I mean, when I first started, you wouldn't ask for a price reduction in the first 45, 60 days. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. As, I had a lot, uh, that's where all the white hair came from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. That, that's why we love, uh, I've already learned quite a few things. So thank you, Eddie. I'm sure you're helping everybody here on the call um, and, and on social media as well. And so these are some of the points to some of the points that we've talked about. Inventory is still at historic lows. So yes, inventory has been trending up, up, up. But if you compare it to 2019, it's still down. We still need more, especially at new listings. Uh, mortgage rates uh, projected to decline to 5.5. We, uh, according to our chief economist, sales are down because of comps to uh, historic 2021. And prices continue to be uh, an incredible story here in, in, in South Florida. Okay, some tools and resources uh, to help our Miami members, uh, all of our members on the call and who will be watching on MiamiRealtorsLive.com. We put out a, we do this every single year, our international global study. It shows the top countries buying in South Florida, top countries buying in each county. You guys could download that study at MiamiRealtors.com forward slash global. And uh, I'll go ahead and ask, uh, you know, everybody on the call, who, which country purchases the most real estate in South Florida? If you guys could put that, that answer in the chat, we'll see who got the correct answer in a little bit. Which country buys the most um, real estate in South Florida? All right, Sunstats, Eddie talked about this already. We talked about it already, about how you could uh, make charts very easily. We also have co-brandable material for our Miami uh, members. It's at for, miamirealtors.com forward slash co-brand. You know, we have ranking flyers. We got top 20 reasons to buy in each county. Make sure you guys see, take advantage of that. Uh, we have it up there. We also have Photofy app. What is Photofy? Well, first of all, it's a, it's, you can only get it on your cell phone, on your smartphone. And it's the, my, the association has loaded this app with free templates for realtors for, for, in, for instance, an open house, it's all set up for you. Once you fill out in your registration, you'll have it there at the bottom. You can see there uh, with the example, your picture, your name, you have the logo, and we have the template set up for you. Um, yes, you know, you do have to sign up, you have to register, and there's the website first, but it's free, free for Miami members. I tried to okay. show it, I have it on my phone. It's, it's really cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, so these are the reports that we have uploaded on our uh, sfmarketintel.com on our stats page. 
we have it for every every county monthly and also you'll get the quarterly and then like i said earlier, also we have city and zip code reports also wanted to say that we put out our monthly market focus email we also have infographics we have videos reports you'll be seeing this on social media again it all starts at sfmarketintel.com try to make it easy just one website uh, sfmarketintel.com uh, we, we talked about this, our, our city and uh, zip code reports. RPR we talked about. Uh, Miami trainers, if you guys have any questions, for instance, on Photify, on Sunstats, on uh, any of other products that we, you know, we mentioned earlier, Matrix, uh, RPR, we have three full-time uh, trainers that uh, put on classes and they can answer your questions. Here's their email. All right, Eddie, so let's take a look at which counties are, are looking at our listings outside of Florida. This is on realtor.com. And Eddie, how could, how could realtors, how could members use this information to leverage and, 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 and improve their business? Oh, I mean, it, it's really simple. We just use social media to target these um, realtors that live in New York County, New York, and um, build relationships with them. You could either use, I mean, it's really easy to find realtors' phone numbers. Uh, so you find a couple of people that are doing well in social media that are, um, you know, uh, that are doing well in, in, in business and reach out to them and tell them, hey, I'm an agent here in the market. I wanted to connect with you, see how, how we can, you know, build, build together. I'd love to send you some market data on what's happening in Miami, uh, keep you as a, as, a, as a point of contact and, you know, make, make a relationship, a bridge relationship there where they can get referral fees for referring business to you. And create yeah, a, yeah. an opportunity to do business. Definitely. And I would do that in all, all those markets. You know, it's, it's a great way to do business, realtor to realtor. Realtor to realtor, yes. And in New York, of course, you know, we had mentioned that our top feeder uh, markets are New York, California, New Jersey. And you can see that New York ranks is, is number one for, for looking at our listings. And this has been the story for many quarters that we've been looking at it, uh, New York. And Georgia's number two, and Virginia's number three. Let's look at Broward. Which which uh, which counties are looking at Broward listings? Again, it's New York number one. You know, you see the same counties looking here. And I look I look at Palm Beach County. This is even heavier New York. You could see New York is at number one, uh, five, six, and number eight. And one other thing I wanted to point out here, if you could, um, by the way, this is all available on realtor.com. And an easy way to find it is if you Google, all you have to do Google is cross market demand. It's the first thing that comes up. You click on there and, and, and you could do this for any, any market. But what I wanted to point out is, is the red. The red is the views from other states. And as we go north, like Miami Day gets 32%. And there's even more in Broward and look at Palm Beach, even more views from out of state. You can even do a you can even do a pay per click uh, targeting realtors in those geographics and say, you know, and do a do a cool uh, graph, you know, tool, go, tool, cool market update and informa infomercial on your cell with a click more for more information type of thing directly targeting the realtors in those markets for their referrals. Those are going to be warm referral leads. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Love it. Okay. All right. And we got through this quick. Uh, actually, I wanted to, uh, let, let's take a look at the chat. Who, who got the... Uh... Oh, yeah. The, the first person was uh, Joseph with Argentina. I don't know what the right answer is, though, Chris. It's Argentina. There it's, it is. It's number Joseph. one. So congratulations, Joseph. I, I thought that might be it. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, Joseph. yeah. They, they won the World Cup, and they're also number one uh, purchasing country in South Florida. There yeah. We go. Thank you, guys. Um, but yeah, you could get all, all the other information there on uh, MiamiRealtors.com forward slash global. That's where we have our global study. And uh, Eddie, Eddie, thank you so much. Eddie is a uh, very action packed uh, hour here. Um, if, if there's any, uh, any other questions, if anybody has any questions, you could go ahead and put that in the chat. And Angelique says, wow, I really thought it was Columbia. She, uh, someone uh, asked uh, what the, where, where they can get this recording. Yes, uh, well, 
first of all, it, it will be on, on our YouTube, um, but we will also be, we could email it to everybody who registered. We can go ahead and email the, uh, the recording, uh, which, which will also be posted on uh, MiamiRealtorsLive.com and uh, the presentation as well. You got one more there, one more question there. Uh, Joseph asked, which is the number two country? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I want question. Say, Please yeah, hold. It's, <laughs> um, you're going to have to have the top five next next time. Next, yeah, I mean, the next, next, uh, next time we'll have the top <laughs> five there. <laughs> but Argentina is number one. But uh, thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, Thank you so much for being on. And any uh, final points that you you wanted to say to everybody? Uh, one one thing you mentioned that I thought was uh, cool is the co branding. I wanted to just expand on that a little bit um, because I'm not a broker that's in a you know large international franchise. Um, I use the co branding international stuff that they have there to to speak about m my ability to reach the international market through my affiliation with the Miami Realtors. Um, and there's some really cool co-branding there. So I encourage you to look at some more of the co-branding options. It's not just these couple of screens here. There's a whole list of co-branding that the Miami Realtors uh, does. So yes. check that out. Yeah, no, no, great point. Um, and also Daniel report, yeah, Columbia's number two. I thought it was Columbia number two, but it, so yes, it's Argentina one, Columbia number two. There we go. Next time we'll have the top five. Peru and Canada tied at number three. Wonderful. There you go. Wonderful. And those, you know, they 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 change. You know, um, it's not is that's just what's happening currently. But those those numbers move around. Um, so uh, someone asked RPR or Sunset uh, Angelique. Uh, I I say both. They have they have they're both they both uh, they both do things quite differently. The different perspectives. Uh, Sunstats is Florida and RPR is is national NAR thing and a National Association of Realtor thing. So I check out both. Yeah, use both. Okay. And I, I would say that I mean I really appreciate the opportunity, Chris, to be invited to be on here and, and uh, humble by that. And because I've seen some of the people have come on before, some of the other leaders, they've done a great job. I was on um I, I've been on several of them, and every time different people give a slight different a slightly different story to what the data is telling. And I think the story behind the data is just as or more impactful than the data itself. So I think that's important to um, to, to continue to show up to these and tune in because uh, every leader has a different perspective uh, on the market and why. No, I definitely agree. I mean, I learn so much every single time from these different leaders and you make great points that uh, each one brings a different uh, background and, and knowledge and you, you it, it's incredible. Awesome. All right. Okay. Well, well, Eddie, thank you so much. And, and thank you to everybody who, who stayed on for the whole hour. Um, again, this recording will be on MiamiRealtorsLive.com. And we'll, we'll see you again next month. Uh, Christina Papas will be with us providing her expertise next time. And so thank you so much. And everybody have a, have a great weekend. Awesome. Thank you so much. Take care, all. Take care, Chris. Yeah, you too, Eddie. Thank you.